Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 8, Spellcheck Basics, I'm going to show you how to use all of the different functions within Spellcheck, and how Eclipse works hard to make your job easier. I've created this example document that I can use to display all of the functions that Spellcheck has to offer within Eclipse. You can access Spellcheck a few ways. By default, Spellcheck will be on your toolbar. However, it's also always located under the production menu. And by default, you can hit Shift-Alt-S to check your spelling. So I'm going to click on Check Spelling. And the Spelling Alternatives window comes up and offers me alternative spellings to the word that has been marked as misspelled. Additionally, the Primary Spellcheck Control window comes up. This window allows me to stop and abort the spellcheck altogether pause it to make edits to my document or move through my document to look for context. The speed controls are used when you use the read along with spell check function, which I'll show later in this video. The spelling alternatives window is where Eclipse provides all of the commands that can be applied to any misspelled words. In the spelling alternatives window, you have the option to ignore or ignore all, change to the selected word, change all of the same misspelled word to the selected word, Misspelled words can be added to your personal spelling dictionary if they're words that you're going to encounter again and you don't want the spell checker to stop on them. The delete function can be used to remove the spelling of a properly spelled word from the properly spelled word list. So if you use the delete function, it'll make sure that in the future a word will always show up as misspelled when you run the spell checker. This can be useful if you accidentally add a word to your spell check list. You can simply place your cursor on it and open the spell check window to remove it with the delete function. You can also delete words that are in the default word list if you want the spell checker to stop on them so you can make sure that the right form of that word has been used or anything like that. You can use the definition button to get a definition of a word. Since this is a name, it won't be able to give us a definition. And you can use pause to pause the spell checker in the same way that checking the pause box up here will pause it so that you can edit in the document or move in the document and then take up the spell checker where you left off. The cancel button will cancel out of the spell checker. As a for instance, I'm going to press the pause button here, and you see that it takes me back into my document, and I can move around, I can make any edits that I need to. So if I notice another error while I'm spell checking, I can use the pause button to take a moment and address it. If I uncheck pause, the spelling alternatives window will return, and it will begin spell checking from wherever my cursor location is. So in this instance, I've moved my cursor after the first misspelled word, so I'm going to move it back up there to make sure that that's where the spell checker begins again, and I'll uncheck pause to resume spell checking. The first misspelling that is flagged is this name, and it is misspelled. As you can see, the witness spelled their name for me. However, none of the spelling suggestions that are offered here by Eclipse are the correct option, and so what I'm going to do is type in the correct name as spelled by the witness. And I'm going to go ahead and hit change all to make sure that both instances of this first name are changed. And so the Eclipse spell checker changed that word. And although the spelling of Adrian is also a misspelling according to Eclipse, it was able to change it for me successfully. So I know that when I counter it again here, I can simply add this spelling or ignore it to dismiss the underlining indicating that it's misspelled. The next misspelling in the document is the last name Baumgartner, which again was spelled out for me. And in this case, none of the suggestions built into Eclipse successfully got the correct spelling. However, since I'm connected to the internet, Eclipse was able to Google this spelling for me and offer from the Google search results the correct spelling as outlined by the witness. And so I can select this option from the list and hit change or change all. I'm going to hit change all in case this name appears elsewhere in the document. Next, it's taken me to the first name again, since the correct spelling is still labeled as a misspelling by Eclipse. At this point, I have the option to add this word to my spelling dictionary, or I can ignore it, or I can ignore all instances. If I select just ignore one time, it will ignore only one instance of it, it'll ignore only this instance, and it'll leave this first one underlined. So I'm going to go ahead and hit ignore all. And since Baumgartner here is labeled as misspelled, I have the option to just hit pause, put my cursor ahead of that, and uncheck pause, and it'll take me to Baumgartner, and I can either ignore 
or add this word to my dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and ignore this one also. And the next option that the spell checker brings me to is this street name, which is Maluka. I had to Google this to get the correct spelling on Google Maps, and none of the built-in suggestions are correct. However, if I scroll down again from Google, I get the correct spelling that is used for the street in Florida, and I can select it from the list and hit change. And Eclipse has taken me to this word again, since that word is still technically misspelled in the Eclipse dictionary. That's why Eclipse wasn't initially able to suggest it, but Google was able to suggest it. Since I know that this is a good spelling and it may come up again when I do Florida work, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my spelling dictionary. So I'll hit add. And Maluka now should be in my spelling dictionary. And if I type it or translate it in the future, it won't be flagged and underlined as misspelled. The next word that Eclipse has stopped on is a simple misspelling of the word doctor. This must have gotten into my dictionary by mistake. And so since I see that in the bottom right, this is actually in my dictionary incorrectly, spelled incorrectly with a K, I'm going to go ahead and global this by clicking the global button. I'm going to type in the correct spelling of doctor and make sure it goes into my main dictionary and press OK. And that word has been globaled. If I pause the spell check and put my cursor on it, you see that in the lower right, now it has the correct spelling that I just put through in my main dictionary. I'm going to unpause the spell check, and the next word it takes me to is de winter. This is a word that I'm also going to add to my dictionary. I'll press add, and this next word is sawgrass, and it's simply misspelled in my dictionary as well. And I see that I have the option from Google to correct this. However, since this is in my dictionary incorrectly, I'm going to global this one as well. This is another instance where a correctly spelled local name is flagged as misspelled by Eclipse, even though it's a good word. This is a term that's definitely going to come up for me again in Florida, and I'm going to add this to my dictionary. I'll press add to, and add that to my spelling dictionary and move on to the next word. And this last instance is a simple misspelling. Both of these spellings exist in the area, and so I'm just going to select the correct spelling in this instance and hit change. And that's the last misspelled word in this document. If I go to the top, you see that none of the words are underlined in red anymore. And the three words that I added to my spelling dictionary will no longer come up in red if they're entered into any other documents in the future. I'm going to go ahead and close out of Eclipse. I'm going to reopen Eclipse. And if I go back into that transcript, all of the words that I added previously are no longer underlined as misspelled. As I mentioned before, you can also use the spell checker to remove words from your properly spelled word list. The word reside, for instance, is a perfectly good word. If I press Alt S with my cursor on it, you see that at the bottom left it says reside is correct. If I press Alt S one more time, it'll open the spelling alternatives window anyway. Although the word is correctly spelled, I still have the option of changing it using the spelling alternatives window. In this case, for the sake of example, I'm going to press delete to remove this word from my correctly spelled word list. Eclipse will confirm that I wish to remove the word from my spelling dictionary and I'll press yes. And in this case, that's all I want to do with the spelling window so I can close out of it. And you see that the word reside is now marked as misspelled. The delete function can be used if you accidentally add a word to your spelling dictionary or if there's just a word that you'd always like spell check to stop on. There are settings controls for spell check under Alt U, Edit, and Spell Options. This is where the dictionaries used by spell check are set. The words that you add to your spelling dictionary go into the file listed as user dictionary. The file will typically be your username.esp, and the words that you remove from your spelling dictionary will go into the corresponding ESD file. So I'll have an Ashley ESP with the words I've added and I have an Ashley ESD with the words I've deleted. When spell checking, you have the option to include job dictionaries. If you check include job dictionaries, any word that is defined in your job dictionary is considered correctly spelled and Eclipse won't stop on it. So if I had had all of these entries defined in a job dictionary, Eclipse would not have marked them as misspelled since I have include job dictionaries checked. Read along with spell check allows you to read along with a spell checker and display errors while editing is what displays the red underlining under the misspelled words. If you uncheck this, the words will still come up in the spell checker, 
but you won't have the red underlines on your screen if they're not desirable for you. Additionally, there are error categories that you can include or exclude from the spell checker. Things like double Q&A and speaker, the basic misspelled words, which is generally always included. However, if you're only looking for double paragraphs, you could, for instance, uncheck misspelled words, double words and punctuation, and check only for double paragraphs. You can customize these error categories each time you run spell check if you need to, or if you're looking for a specific error, you can check just for that type of category. If you check check non-transcribed text, this will also spell check text that you have typed in on your keyboard. This will include things like hand-typed index pages, title pages, certificate pages, and sometimes it's desirable to have those spell checked and sometimes it's not, just because of the formatting. The purge ignored words allows you to purge words that you've ignored. You may want to do this between documents or between trials that you've edited. This allows you to ignore spellings that are particular to each trial or case, and then purge them so that those bad spellings are not ignored in the future. I'm going to go ahead and check read along with spell check and press OK. I'll go to the top of my document and press the spell check button again. And the read along with spell check function allows you to read along as the cursor goes through the document. You can control the speed using the up and down speed buttons here in the spell check control window. And whenever it encounters a misspelled word, you can address that word and the spell checker will continue reading through the document. I'm going to go ahead and ignore this misspelling. And the spell checker is continuing to read through the document and I can slow it down using the arrow on the control panel or I can speed it up. So the read along with spell checker is customizable to your reading speed. And so this can be useful if you like to read along as you're spell checking. It can be helpful to maintain context while you're editing and ensure that nothing is missed. I'm going to go to my user settings to the edit tab to spell options and I'm going to purge ignored words and I'll hit okay all the way out. I'll close out of my document and close out of Eclipse. I've returned to Eclipse and to my spell check document. And you see that all of the words that I ignored during the spell check are now underlined again since I purged the ignored words list. However, the words that I added to my spelling dictionary like Malaluka, De Winter, and Sawgrass are no longer underlined because those were added to my spell check dictionary. In addition to simply correcting misspellings, the spelling alternatives window also offers you definitions. If I select the word radiology and press Alt S, in the bottom left it reports that radiology is correct. However, if I press Alt, Alt S again, in the spelling alternatives window, there's an option to define the word. I can press definition and Eclipse will give me the definition of the word that I've selected. If for some reason Eclipse doesn't have a definition for the word, like for the word Maluka, this is a word that I added to my spelling dictionary, and so Eclipse may not have a definition for that word. If I press Alt S twice here and go to def definition, you see that Maluka is not here. However, in the top right, I can Google it. And you see that it'll tell me exactly what that word is, and it'll confirm also that my spelling is correct. Another trick that Spellcheck can offer is with words that are confusing whether they should be one word or two words. At the end of this document, I've added the term roof lines. What you can do is highlight both words by using the mark function, either F7 or hyperkey M, and then press Alt S. And you see that in the bottom, it reports that roof lines as one word is correct. And so I know that in this instance, I can simply remove the space between the words, and that word is now correctly spelled. Thank you for watching this video about spell check. I hope that it has been enlightening about all of the tools that are at your fingertips with this simple yet robust feature in Eclipse. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 seven. Technical support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is available at support at eclipsecat.com.
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content. Thanks and have a great day!